a speed cube. It's a special kind of Rubik's cube that is meant to be solved very quickly. In this video, we'll learn about speed cubing, the basics of how to solve one, and then we'll take a look inside to see how it works. I like Rubik's cubes. It's a fun 3D puzzle to try and line up all the colors. And you know what? It's a lot easier to animate than some of these large scale items I've been doing. So it's a nice little break, but still an interesting topic. It was invented by Erno Rubik in 1974. This happened in Budapest, Hungary. It was originally called the Magic Cube, and it looked a little bit different. In 1980, it was renamed to the Rubik's Cube. Since then, it's become a worldwide phenomenon. Lots of other size variations of the cube have also appeared. And these get bigger, and bigger, and bigger. Okay, not that big. The largest one I think they sell is the 21 by 12 puzzle size. Now, it's fun not just to solve it, but to solve it as fast as possible. The problem with the Rubik's Cube is that it wasn't designed to move quickly. There can be a lot of friction between the sides as you spin them. Sometimes moving too quickly can pop one of the pieces and the cube starts to fall apart. Not good if you're trying to break a record. Those that want to solve it quickly are called speed cubers, and they usually don't use a regular Rubik's Cube, they use a speed cube. The sides turn much easier, and some of the pieces have rounded edges. This allows you to do something called corner cutting. This means that before we finish a turn, we can start the next one. Remember, it's a speed cube, all about doing it fast. The way you solve one of these cubes is the same. It just depends on how much you care about speed. The real question, can you solve one? Maybe, maybe not. Let's go over a few of the basics that might help you get started. The center pieces are fixed in place. They don't move at all, but they can rotate. These make up the core of the cube, which we'll take a closer look at in just a minute. The rest of the pieces are called cubies, and there are 20 of them. These are the pieces that move around the cube. Simple, right? Just get the 20 cubies in the right place. When first starting out, it's pretty exciting to solve just one color. But you have to keep in mind, we're not just moving around individual squares. We're moving around whole pieces at a time. For example, corner pieces have three colors on them. And these colors will always move around together. So even though you've solved one side, these pieces aren't in the right place until the entire layer is solved. Then you can move on to solve the cube layer by layer. One of the most popular methods for speed cubing is called CFOP. And this is an acronym which is made up of other acronyms and... Okay, it's not too bad. Stick with me for just a minute. This method solves the cube starting on the bottom and working your way up. Although this isn't a detailed tutorial, let me at least give you a general idea of how it works. First, the cross, which will be solved on the bottom. Remember, the colors have to line up with the center pieces on the side. So let's say this is green here, it would be in the wrong spot, but since it has blue, we're good to go. Next is F2L, or first two layers. You'll notice we already have some of it solved. We just need to figure out these four pairs of pieces. Start with the corner pieces on the bottom layer, and then the edge pieces on the middle layer. Experienced speed cubers will solve these as an F2L pair, or first two layers pair, bringing them both down at the same time. This last layer is a little tricky because you have to move the pieces around without messing up what you've already done, which is a lot. There are two steps for this last layer. We start with OLL, or orientation of last layer. This lines up the colors on top while ignoring the side colors. Then finally, PLL, or permutation of last layer. This uses special moves to swap these pieces around until it's completely solved. To really master this, you'll need to learn algorithms, or a specific set of steps to move the pieces around where you want them to go. For example, one of the last moves might be swapping these three edge pieces around. There's a specific algorithm to do this without messing up any of the other pieces. There are a few different methods for solving the cube, but the most popular one is the one we just demonstrated, CFOP. 
But speed cubing, or let alone just solving the cube, isn't for everyone, and that's okay. It's still fun to mess around with. Let's dive into the mechanism of each cube. As we talked about before, each cube has a core which holds the six centerpieces for each cube. They are fixed in place, but they can rotate. Each cube has eight corner pieces and 12 edge pieces. For the original Rubik's Cube, these pieces have extra plastic hanging off the side. The plastic holds the cube together. It's a bit more blocky of a design and it has a lot more friction as the pieces move around. Which is okay if you're not worried about speed. The speed cube is going to look a little bit different on the inside. The corner pieces and edge pieces, they look a little bit different as well. They are designed to be smooth and sleek and to minimize friction. The core of the cube looks different as well. The speed cube has something called a tension system. It's made up of six springs that hold the cube together. The core and the screws are fixed in place, but the center pieces are pushed towards the center by the spring. Because of the springs, this means that the speed cube is actually a bit flexible. You can pull the pieces apart just a little bit. This is one of the reasons that corner cutting works so well. On the regular Rubik's Cube, corner cutting is not really possible. You have to completely line up the turn before starting the next one. The tension system on the speed cube is usually adjustable. The caps on the center pieces come off, which exposes a tiny screw. If you happen to have a screwdriver, you can tighten the screw, which makes the cube less flexible or held together more firm. Or loosen the screw, making it more flexible. If possible, you'll want to adjust all six screws to the same amount. This allows you to customize your cube just how you like it. A lot of enthusiasts will also use lubricant on their cube to further reduce the friction. You can get these lubricants, and if you ever want to take your cube apart, then loosening these screws can make it much easier. In some cubes, they will use a technology called maglev, which is short for magnetic levitation. If you put two of the same poles together on a magnet, they will push off of each other. So in the speed cube, instead of a spring doing the pushing, the magnets now do the pushing. This eliminates any noise from the springs, but also gets rid of even more friction, because the magnets aren't actually touching. Regardless of what you're using in the core, magnets or springs, there's another place that magnets can be used, in the edge and corner pieces. This helps align the layers as you turn them, so as long as you get close, the magnets will pull it back into place. There is a whole community out there that is quite passionate about speed cubing. They have championships all over the world to see who can solve them the quickest. The current world record for a 3x3 solve is just over 3 seconds. That's fast. 